happy Tuesday. So I'm starting the vlog pretty late in the day. It's um, almost six o'clock. Uh, just got home from a full day of lecture and today's the first week of, um, or today's the first day of my night shift. So I go in from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Um, starting tonight and I do that through uh, the weekend. And so yeah, I finished up my 3 to 11 p.m. shift. Um, I ended up seeing like, it was about four deliveries I saw during that week, um, three vaginal deliveries and one C-section. I'll tell you guys about that later. Um, but labor and delivery has been interesting. Um, it's three weeks of labor and delivery, which is a lot. And after that, I move on to Gyne. Um, This is my second of the three weeks. So we'll see how the night shift goes tonight. But yeah, um, we had a full day of lecture today. Um, what did we talk about? Abortions, elective, spontaneous, um, prema premature labor, um, contraception. So yeah, it was a long day sitting in a class and listening and it was like group discussion as well. So I think for now, I'm just gonna rest a little bit and probably take a little nap and then head out around um, maybe 10, 10, 15 for my 11 p.m. shift. Well, I know that you're young. And I know you're naive, but you know, know that you can sugar up. So this area of Atlanta is kind of like sketchy. I was about to walk my normal path and I saw a random guy with his dog over there. So I am diverting. So really the only difference with night shift versus day shift is that on night shift, we have to write postpartum notes. So any of the patients that, um, delivered the previous night we would go around on them like around 5 a.m and um write a note on them and of course ronnie consists consists of um doing the physical exam ask some questions things like that and then we would present to the new day team that comes in like around 6 30. um but just got into the call room um about to do sign out and then start the shift night shift is typically slow hopefully this night won't be too slow um if it is i will be sleeping for a couple of hours and night shift is over it's about eight o'clock i literally slept for the majority of it saw one patient when i first got in went to sleep around 1 30 woke up around 4 30 started writing my notes had three patients to round on we presented one of those patients during morning report um i'm having an interesting experience with one resident um personalities in ob mm. but it is okay it is okay and i can let her ruin my mood um yeah but i'm not even feeling too tired of course i got to sleep a few hours during the nights um yeah i'm just gonna head home but I shouldn't say there's interesting personalities in OB. Everybody has their own personalities and I feel like you should just take everybody on an individual basis because you know going into surgery people have like the perception that like surgeons are so you know mean and tough and stuff but all my attendings are awesome like the residents I came into contact and work with were awesome. Um, you know for OB <laughs> I've worked with some really great ones and some ones that were not that great and I just feel like I don't know she tried not to take it personal um you know if you have an issue if you feel like a resident is doing too much or is going beyond giving you like constructive criticism or things like that you should take it with the higher ups um if it becomes an issue but i don't have time for those kind of issues i'm just trying to um get through these eight weeks learn as much as i can get my good grade and move on uh, the great thing about the hours with this shift of 11 to 7, um, like a typical night shift may be, let's say, 12 hours. So you'll do 7 to 7. So if I'm going to sleep around 9 a.m. and I wake up around 2-ish, um, I still have like the full day to get things done, to study before I go back in around, let's say I leave the house around 10.30. So yeah, I'm going to head to sleep now, wake up, and then get some work done. Hey guys, it is now much later in the day. I ended up waking up super early, like at 12.45. And so kind of just laid in bed for a little bit. And now I'm up, about to eat some lunch. I feel like as soon as your body, or as soon as my body gets used to one schedule, it's just on to the next thing. Now I'm doing night shift and I'm ready to be back to the normal. Ooh, there's lighting. 
the normal waking up early in the morning and then being done by afternoon time so i have that next week the 7 a.m to 3 p.m shift on lnd yeah like i mentioned earlier um i saw four deliveries on my first um week of labor and delivery one was a stat c-section that was like the most intense thing ever they're literally like 20 people in the um in the or like all hands on deck she came in about 28 weeks as soon as she rushed to the door like she was already in active labor they just had to get the baby out um so yeah i was able to observe that and then the other three were vaginal deliveries that i assisted with um i was able to deliver the placenta not the actual baby but i delivered the placenta and oh my gosh women just go through so much with their bodies like it makes me scared for labor in the future but more and more women are actually opting for elective c-sections typically you know your plan is to vaginal delivery if something happens if the mother's at risk if the baby's at risk then that's when you transition to a c-section but yeah women are opting to do elective c-sections because um you know kind of avoiding the pain and things like that that comes from vaginal deliveries but you know to each their own c-section that's a surgery you know they put you to sleep um you're not fully sedated actually you know the mother is awake but you know you're opening up your abdomen so much can go wrong with that you know risk for infection um the recovery is way longer with a c-section so you just have to outweigh you know what you want the risk and the benefits but again with vaginal delivery things can go wrong as well you can have lacerations you can have tears the worst thing the worst tear you can have is a fourth the the um sorry a fourth degree tear like that goes like from your vag all the way to the anus um so you can imagine you know how painful that would be you know as a medical student um whichever laboring patient that you're following or whoever you're assigned to you know you follow them throughout the your shift check up on them see how they're doing but i don't like checking up on them so often because they're in pain and they're uncomfortable the last thing they want is like a medical student coming to them and saying you know how are you doing how's your pain level you know clearly they're in labor they're in a lot of pain so i check up on them in the beginning of my shift um maybe halfway through to see how they're doing and when it's time to deliver obviously i'm in the room with them and outside of the medical students checking up on them they have nurses checking up on them they have the doctors coming in and doing the um the cervical check which is a painful thing you know you have to check how far they're dilated um check where the head is and um how far they're faced so lots of checks <laughs> throughout the process but it's really giving me like an appreciation for when a healthy baby is born and when there's no complications because there is just so much that can go wrong in the birthing process and it can be a pretty scary process for the mother and for the family but when you think of labor and delivery typically you think of oh a beautiful baby is born you know a happy family but there is other sides of it you have infertility issues you have ectopic pregnancies, you have miscarriages, you have um, certain situations where they miscarry maybe at 20 weeks and they still have to push the baby out. You know, you have to deal with um, DNCs, which, which is a form of abortion, you know, dilation and curatage. So there are other aspects, you know, of labor and delivery, not just, okay, the baby pops out and that's the end of the story. And apart from, um, you know, being involved with the deliveries, we're also involved with uh, triaging patients. And so patients come in, it's, it's set to be like an emergency OB clinic. So you just don't come in for a few aches and pains. You come in if something is seriously wrong. And so um, as med students, we go see them first, do the, the full history and physical. And then we present and we'll go back in the room with our resident and um, they may allow you to do the pelvic exam. So you put the speculum in, do the wet prep. Um, also, I'm not sure how many weeks it is, but sometimes you should go ahead and if they're below a certain amount of weeks, they're not automatically going to be hooked up so that you can see the fetal heart tracing and fetal monitor. So you may have to do that on your own. So you would get the Doppler, you know, um, get the ultrasound gel and all that. You would find the baby's heart and um, record that as part of your physical exam findings because you're not only doing the physical exam on the mother, you're also doing it um, on the baby. So similar to the surgery rotation for the ob rotation, they allow us to check out books for the rotation. Um, so 
this is the main text that I've been using, Hacker and More. There's also another one called Beckman that I use, and I I like that because it it has like the next step, like what's the next step for um, diagnosis or what should you get for treatment. Hacker and More, not necessarily like that, but this is um, this is a good read. Ob Gyan Secrets, it's um, can fit in like your white coat pocket, so read it during downtime. Um, has all the topics and kind of like a short summary, key things you need to know. Case files for Obi Gyan. Each um, different rotation has a case file series. Haven't looked at this yes yet, but I will probably be using it to prepare for the OSCE. The OSCE is the standardized exam where you go in and you know interview do the HMP on like five different exams. And then as always, online edit. I watch the videos, um, use the notes. And the videos are really good for just like priming and getting you ready for um, whatever you're about to see. So I've been through most of the um, obstetrics videos. Um, just been looking at those with the notes and then when I start guiding in a couple weeks, I'll make sure I've been through, you know, some of the um, gynecology videos as well. And it is a gloomy, gloomy day. Can't really see, but it's raining. The kind of weather mat that makes you want to go to sleep. But today is November the 7th. My birthday is on the 18th. So it was that next week Sunday. So I'll be celebrating next week. Um, can anybody guess how old I am turning? Leave it in the comment section below. I feel like people always get um, my age incorrectly. But I'm going to study for a few hours, um, probably watch some videos and then read the textbook. And then um, probably take a little nap for about an hour before I head in for another night shift. <laughs> the new do the straight here but i'm feeling it so yes yeah, about that time to head out for another night shift it is about 10 20 um thank you guys again for watching again this week if you enjoyed it please make sure to give it a thumbs up make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next one which should be my birthday vlog bye guys <laughs>